Hi, I'm Miriam Joshua, the founder of Woo Culture. I'd like to welcome you to this special episode. Our guest today does not need a lot of introduction. Mary Ann J. George is a Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter and a musician. Uh, she was also a part of Maverick City Worship Collective. Um, I'm really excited to have you here and have this conversation with you. I uh, heard so much about you. It's really <laughs> nice to finally actually see you, heard your songs, uh, enjoyed your songs. Uh, and it's really special because uh, having an Indian out there in the forefront, a woman out there in yeah. the forefront uh, is definitely something. So welcome. Welcome to India. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here in Hyderabad. So this is great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. What is your take uh, of women leading in ministry? Not just as a creative, but as a whole. What do you think about that? There's something really unique about the female expression that God loves and he created it. And he actually trusted a woman to hold Jesus in her womb. And so I think there's a divine calling in that. And I think that more women should hold on to their identity as being a woman and trust that God has empowered them to be in ministry and to expand their expand his kingdom. So I really feel like there is a place for women in ministry. And I think that more women don't, most women don't actually allow themselves to hold their identity and really take charge of their identity as a female mm -hmm. and as a woman. Because I think there is something really unique and beautiful that women have that men don't. And I think in the light of how God even created females and how he used um, a woman to hold the divine. It's just very unique. Men were not given that opportunity. God trusted a woman to do that. You know, he could have chosen the Lord Jesus to come in any way, but he chose to use a woman. And I think that's really unique. And I think that's a call to all of us that if God said that woman, uh, a woman was, was what he was going to use to bring Jesus into the world, who's to say that we shouldn't be in ministry and leadership positions serving him in that capacity? So yeah, I, I do feel like that. I do feel like women have a role to play in ministry, and I think that more women need to take charge of that and own their identity in that way. Yeah, so true. And even the fact that when Jesus, you know, when, at the point of resurrection, <clears throat> Jesus first chose to, uh, you know, to to be seen by a woman, and, mm -hmm. and he asked that's her, true. gave her the instruction, saying, "Go and tell the others." Right. right, and I think that's so unique. And there's yeah. always the mention of the first, right, in the Bible. And imagine if Jesus chose a woman mm. uh, to carry the news right. of resurrection. I think there's something so unique and beautiful mm -hmm. uh, about a woman uh, being in ministry. If God, yeah. uh, you know, God trusted Mary with that news, I'm mm -hmm. sure that's something for us to really hold on to and and know that that's God's heart for women in ministry. So. Such a good point. I fully agree with you in that. And I think that even just... The roles that women play in life often, I feel, like suit them so well for ministry <laughs> because they're just, they're playing many different roles and everybody in ministry knows the amount of roles that you have to play as someone involved in a local church or whatever. So I think women are naturally just skilled to take on different roles and often play more roles as a woman than a man does. And so I just feel like there's a there's a natural tendency for women to be in any sort of leadership position, whether they know it or not, mm -hmm. but they're naturally leading mm -hmm. every day of their lives. So I do feel like they are equipped to do ministry mm -hmm. and should be equipped to do ministry. What were the challenges that you faced yeah. as a woman uh, growing in this space? I mean, mm -hmm. not just now. I mean, now things are different because you're yeah. a Grammy Award winner. So now I'm sure people are more open to it. But uh, through the years, what were your challenges as a woman? So I, it's funny, I think even you just saying like now, you know, I feel like when you get higher up, it's often harder and there's more yeah. expectations of you as a woman. <laughs> so I feel as though there are a ton of challenges within the songwriting space itself, because I'm, I'm also a songwriter, right? So within the songwriting space, and I'm just going to speak specifically, specifically to my industry, but um, it's more um, male dominated in general. So it's, like sometimes I, it's like one out of four in a writing room is a woman, and most of the time it's much harder for women to get a word out when there comes to th when it comes to three other three it. other men. <laughs> so it's kind of hard for people to for women to like assert themselves in those situations. And I think there's this fine line between like 
asserting yourself too much and then being labeled as bossy, but also not wanting to be passive and not wanting to let people walk all over you. So there's always that line you kind of have to to use discernment to know what to fight for, what not to fight for, what's worth like speaking up about and what's not worth speaking up about. And I don't even think men think twice about that. So the fact that like as a woman we're constantly thinking about, okay, is this worth speaking up about? Is this like should I waste energy here? Is this going to be well received? Like that was one challenge I felt like I had to deal with. And then on top of that, being a person of color. But mm. let's just first talk about being a woman because that's it's, that itself is so difficult. Mm. And so, but then you have the challenge for me when I started off on a more public platform, I didn't have children and I didn't have a child. I just have one child. I keep saying children, but I only have one child. But um, I started off not having any kids or and and then like, midway in in between all this, right on the cusp of when my group that I was a part of was like starting to rise, I got pregnant and I had a child. And that I felt like was really difficult to navigate because personally you go through a a huge change in role, right? You're not just living for yourself anymore or living for like your desires, but now you have this, this person you're constantly thinking about that's like needs you physically and like you literally serve them physically. And so it was just like that role to manage like my feelings about that postpartum and then also be on a public platform and serving in this capacity, being one of the few women in my group. It was really hard to like trust that God had called me to do this and to know that like there was a space for me, even though I didn't look like I used to, because even physically my body changed. And it was just like, I don't feel good anymore. Like, I just don't feel like my old self. And when I like started off, I felt so different. And now I feel like I'm, I don't know, like I don't look as good or I don't feel as good. And so navigating that whole world and the insecurity that comes with that on a public platform, like men are not gonna, they don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like in those spaces, they're not, they're not sitting there like, oh, like, are you okay? Like, no one's, <laughs> no one's hand holding you in these things. And so it's kind of like women that have to, like, like pull their pants up and be like, okay, we're going to just figure this out. Like, we're going to have to, like, manage and trust that, that, like, we have what it takes. And we often, like, um, we have to prove ourselves almost. And it, that's where I think the challenge is, where I feel like I wish that women didn't have to struggle with that pressure to prove themselves because we're already enough. And God made us enough. In fact, we're more than enough. And so when women come into that space, it's natural to feel that discomfort of like, oh, man, like no one gets where I'm at. Like no one understands what I'm going through. But and then that need to like I have to overperform or over excel or overachieve or prove my worth, prove my value in a space. And this is not just in like music, right? Like it's in any space, any like CEOs that are women who are going through all of it and have to like find time to pump and find time to like feed their kids and put their kids to bed. Like, and a lot of times men are not having that same expectations placed on them. And then it's like, you know, my mom will always tell me and be like, okay, like when are you coming home? And I'm just like, if, if like my husband was traveling this much, this much, would that be the question? Like, I wonder, I wonder. I that totally. And like, I wonder if that would be the question. And I, I constantly have to remind them, like, I did not choose to do this. I feel really called to do it. And then when I explain it, they, they're understanding of it. But it's like that constant need to explain yourself, like that feeling of like, am I doing the wrong thing? Like if your mom is telling you, like, are, are you, are you doing the wrong thing? Like, you know, that feeling is there sometimes. And I have to just trust that God has equipped me and my child is taken care of, like my, he's going to take care of her. And so I think those are some of the challenges. Even now, like I'm not here to say that I'm like past it, right? Like there's still there's still guilt that sometimes comes up and I have to like surrender that and just trust that there's something bigger and trust that God has equipped me to do this and that um, talk to other women in ministry or talk to other women in, in business or who have like dealt with that and get encouragement from them and just know that some days it's not going to feel great and that's okay. Like we're just going to keep going. We're just going to keep going. And when it doesn't feel good, we're going to follow our, trust our gut. We're going to follow our heart and we're going to do whatever we feel like we need to do and trust that God's giving us that wisdom day by day. It's a daily struggle. It's a daily choosing and it's daily grace for those moments. So, yeah. Wow. That, I mean, 
so well said. <laughs> I think that's that that definitely is a big challenge, right? Especially mm-hmm. the fact I love what you shared, the guilt that's attached to guilt, the whole thing. Guilt, mom guilt, yeah. Oh man. And the thing is it's not just you carrying that guilt. There are right. enough number of people around you who make you feel, feel that way. Even it, <laughs> it's like even worse when it's like it's hard to like ask for time for yourself. Like for me, I'll give you an example specifically. Like I'll go travel for three days um, to do a ministry thing. And people think I'm having fun. Like, I, and I am. Like I enjoy, I enjoy ministry so much. But there is an emotional toll it takes on me. It's, I'm tired. Mm. Like I come back from a ministry trip and I'm tired. And it's hard for me to sometimes be like, hey, I need to like rest for a day. Like mm. just give me a day to rest. But it's like that guilt of like, oh my gosh, like, who's with the baby for the last three days? It wasn't me. Like my husband was with her. My mom and dad were with her. Like now I feel embarrassed or I feel guilty to ask for another day to rest. Like, but you know, those are things where I'm just like, (laughs) I, I, it's, it's so hard to like ask for help sometimes. And I'm trying to be more okay with just inviting, like, like in allowing myself to ask for it, like just allowing myself to not be like intimidated or guilted into like, pushing past what I'm able to. I want to give the best version of myself to my child, right? So I want to give the best version of myself to my parents, to my husband, to my friends. And if that's what I have to do, then I'll ask. You know, the the worst that can happen is they say no, and then you have to figure it out. But asking, like just asking, you know, so. Yeah. Struggle. It definitely is a struggle, but I love what you shared we look at the whole thing from our perspective saying, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to be a mother who's going to take care of my, 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 my child or children. But the fact is if God has called us, I'm sure he's going to take care of our children when we are away. Uh, And we don't have to feel guilty. And also the fact that you have a daughter, I have three daughters. Amazing. And uh, this is something that one of my friends, uh, you know, he inspired me and he said, Miriam, imagine what your girls are actually, I mean, they're growing up looking at you as a role model. Imagine where they're going to go. Especially mm. in a world where women are not in the forefront, not many are in the forefront, like whether it's a creative space or any space at all. Uh, but just being a great role model, even when you're away, your, your child knows that, you know, you're away for something important. And like we, sh- you know, like we were discussing earlier, you know, you want your daughter to be a part of your journey. And that's something that I've realized too. Like I, I try mm. and bring my girls with me wherever, you know, whether it's workshops or it's things amazing. that we do. And, and I've realized that they go back inspired. And recently, yeah. my daughter, I mean, she didn't even tell us, but then she's, she's you know, she for a school project, she worked on her own podcast. And I was like, oh, oh wow. That's so sweet. Yeah. So I, And things like yeah. that, that these are seeds that we are sowing into our children. So sometimes, you know, the guilt can definitely um, you know, ruin, ruin the joy in the whole process. But I really feel like you shared that God is doing something so beautiful, yeah. even in this process of us being away from our children. So. Right. And I think like people forget that parenting is a ministry in and of itself. And so we have to show our children that ultimately they are not our lives, right? Like they are not the purpose that we, I mean, they are part of it, but it's not our ultimate goal here on earth is to bring glory to God mm-hmm. through whatever way. If that's through our parenting, parenting our children, we're going to teach our children mm-hmm. that there's something that, there's something bigger here that we're serving and looking towards, right? There's a hope that there's that something, there's like a hope that we're looking to and there's a person that equips us to do these things, right? So I want her to know that like, oh, like I don't want her to live, get to the end of her life and realize, oh, her, my mom threw away all of her dreams mm. to take care of me. Like, no, I want her to be empowered to pursue the things that God has put in her heart, right? Wow. So. I just think that that is part of the ministry mm. that people don't want to always acknowledge. That's part of it. Like you need to show your kids that like God's the ultimate thing we're working towards. Yeah. It's not security and stability all the time with our children and with our families. Yeah. That's very important. Yes. But ultimately they need to know mm. that we're serving the Lord. Mm. Like that's the goal here. And that's the purpose here. Everything is for something bigger. Mm. Every choice we make, every decision we make as a family is how are we going to bring glory to God in this? How are we expanding the kingdom in this, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think if they know through the ministry of family, through the way that I minister to them yeah. as my family, if they are if they are um, confident in the fact that, like, no, my mom and dad love the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's my biggest thing. If I can die um, knowing that my child knows that I've served the Lord and I've loved him, like, well, as best as I could, like, I feel like I've done – my due diligence, even if I haven't like ministered to many people, you know, if my own children can 
look at my life and say like, she loved the Lord and she taught me that it's important to serve him. And that love for him precedes everything. Like, I think that my role here, my purpose here on earth was fulfilled in many ways. That's the goal, right? Like we want to teach the children under us, the people under us that that's the, that's what we live for. We live for him. And so I think that's part of the ministry. A lot of people don't want to like acknowledge, but it's a big part of it too, how you parent them and how, what decisions you choose in these moments. I mean, I'm sure you're going to be a great role model to your daughter and the whole um, environment that you're raising her up in is going to be so much more easier for her. She does not have to try and figure this out for herself. Oh, yeah. So who was your role model growing up? Oh, not necessarily, yeah. I mean, not, not necessarily in your family, but could be in ministry as well. Who was your? Yeah. I think like if I'm talking about women in general, it's funny because um, I'm in Hyderabad going to her church, but Darlene Sheck was like one of the first females I saw in the worship scene that like just was unashamedly yeah. female <laughs> and was just also like just a beautiful heart, like of, of passion for worship. And I remember listening to those older Hillsong albums and being so inspired by her. So she's someone I was deeply inspired, inspired by. But my own mom was a worship leader and just um, <clears throat> not to the extent of what I'm doing now, but like in her church, just watching my mom, I had really amazing people in my family. And I know it's very cliche to say maybe your mom, but um, my mom, my aunts, like just deeply inspired. My mother-in-law is an amazing like speaker and worshiper and leader like of women and um, just seeing all of them and the ways that they have placed the Lord as like everything goes by him and, and, and just watching them choose to worship it despite their circumstances or whatever they're going through has been deeply inspiring for me and have provided um, grounding for me because I just feel like I can always go to my mom and I, I may not always like her response, <laughs> but I know that she'll point me to truth. Mm. And so I think having those type of women in my life, because not everybody has that. And I think just having that and my my grandmother, my aunt, like all these people that I've looked up to my whole life. And they're just beautiful examples and role models for me personally. But if we're just talking like worship and stuff like that, like Darlene Sheck was like one of the big ones I can think of right now. And she... I just like her and then Kim Walker Smith was a huge one for me. Just watching her being very like un unashamed and unapologetic in her mm. expression was so freeing. Yeah. Like it just was beautiful. I, I was really deeply moved by those two people. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, talking about Darlene Chek, <clears throat> remember back in the day, I I'm a dancer and uh, looking at Darlene Chek being fully pregnant, jumping on stage. There we go. Yeah. Man, that was I, did, I actually forgot about that, but yeah, that. <laughs> inspiring yeah. so inspiring and like any I feel like there's so many women now in this in the Christian music space that are like so inspiring but like just watching them bring their kids along and mm -hmm. like not allowing the difficulty of parenting or having kids like stop them from pursuing the things that they want to do bringing their kids on tour that is not an easy thing to do like yeah. bringing your children with you to ministry events I mean I like personally I love my daughter but, like, I'm not focused. Like, if she's with me at a ministry event, I am, like, so focused on her. Like, I'm just, like, is she ta being taken care of? Like, if I know she's being taken care of, it's a little bit easier. But it's, like, your focus is never, like, straight when your children are around because you're just, like, oh, my gosh, is she okay? Did she eat? Who's taking care of her? Like, you know, or you hear her cry. Like, there have been times where I'll be, like, on stage at a church and I hear her and I'm just, like, in the middle of, like, a moment. I'm just, like, oh, God, did she what happened like you know so you're all, they're always on your mind but it's just really beautiful like to have to see more and more women bring their kids and just showing the world like yeah it's not going to be the most um it's not going to be the most prim and proper type of session we're having <laughs> here but this is life it's yeah. not perfect it's messy faith is messy like life is messy and it's okay god meets us in the middle of all of it i think that is so powerful I think that is so powerful, and that's a representation of faith in the gospel in a way that a lot of people are not comfortable seeing. Yep. And I think I think more and more women doing that is beautiful, and I hope that I can do that with my own daughter daughter, and bring her around and show the world. Like, I love that um, when we went on tour with Mav, like, we had songs where we just bring our kids on stage, and it's just like chaos. It's just oh, like sweet. five, six kids <laughs> running around on stage with us. But it's just amazing. That's life. That's like, I want her to see those moments. I want her to, like this is mommy and daddy's life and this is the life that we do. This is the, the 
lifestyle we've chosen mm. and we re- we're inviting her it's not it's not easy it's not easy for the kids and but like this is what it looks like to serve the lord it's yeah. not going to be easy but it's the best choice so yeah. they'll 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 get older and say like their lives were not like the normal <laughs> traditional life so <laughs> hopefully they'll have some fun stories yeah but I, but at the same time i really think it's so uh important for other women and mothers mm-hmm. to know that it's It's absolutely yeah. fine. And I think that that is God's plan for us right. to function mm-hmm. as mothers because I remember back in the day when we used to have Zoom calls mm. and uh, during the lockdown yep. and me being the perfectionist I would right. uh, make sure the girls were outside the right, 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 right. But then you know the way God ministered to me was so funny. Um you know we had um uh, an international speaker mm-hmm. one of our main online conferences mm-hmm. and then he got his son to sit right next to him and he was playing lego and there were about it. 300 participants who were on that call Love and it. that ministered to, to me, me right. like nothing had before Amazing. and i realized that and and he and he was just being authentic he was being a real dad mm-hmm. uh and and i think that's important for us as mothers as women to just bring our kids along right. wherever possible exactly. so that we can inspire so many other women and say hey you know what so life can still continue yeah, exactly you know? so like yeah. it's not the end of the world if they cry like <laughs> yeah. we just say sorry and move on like you know so i i i agree with you in that yeah. i think that's really beautiful and it speaks louder than people realize as a woman uh, a cr- and a creative minister how would you define book? Hmm. I think that we all have different um assignments mm. but I think we all ultimately have the same purpose like whether you're a man or a woman like we ultimately have a purpose of loving others well to the best of our abilities and pointing them loving God and loving people mm. it's really the greatest commandment right so that is our purpose and then another part of that is sharing that with the world and I really believe when you love God and love people well you're already doing the great commission right so So I think that's our general purpose, but I do think that we all have different assignments and how we express those things are going to be different for me, right? My current assignment or my my assignment was to share this through music and that's what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. And I minister through my group or and you know, now I'm choosing to do it more on a, on a solo basis, but that is my assignment. But I think purpose it ultimately comes down to loving God, loving people and sharing that with the world, the great commission. So I think those are three things that no matter who you are, mm-hmm. like if you know the lord that's our purpose our purpose is not like and i think a lot of times what people are looking for when they're like oh i don't know what i'm called to do i don't know i think they're looking for assignment they're like what is what is my assignment in this season because i think assignment changes with seasons right so it's like that season of life i was in i was i was assigned to be with this group and i really felt like there was a calling on that and now i do feel like my assignment is to mother and like to parent and but also what does ministry look in light of that and and showcasing that to the world and showing that to like my followers or people who are invested in my ministry like hey this is what my life looks like now it's not what it used to be i used to tour i used to do all those things now my life looks very different mm-hmm. and i think that's my assignment now in this season but i think when a lot of people struggle with like what's my assignment what's my like what's my purpose i think i think i can say confidently through scripture your purpose is to love god and love others and and carry that out to the world to show people that like and point them to something bigger through your life like through your decisions through your choices i think that's the ultimate purpose we carry it's not different from man and woman i think we all carry the same purpose but how we what we are assigned to mm-hmm. is different and that's where i think more people want to know like what am i what am i assigned to in this season because that will change thank you Okay, the last question for today. I I'm a big believer that God is moving in a powerful way in and through the creative platform. Uh like never before and and I'm not talking about just, you know, uh, in the music space, but in the creative space as a whole through mm-hmm. arts and media and and dance and yeah. all the different things. So what is your take? What what are you what is it that you see um as a creative and as a woman mm-hmm. uh, in this time and season? What is it that what do you think God is doing? I think that one of the reasons why I think Mav City took the world by storm was because we were um not afraid to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of creatives look at other people and want to emulate a certain style or a certain um vibe or aesthetic and forget that there is such a unique aesthetic and a branding in them and like a unique identity that they carry mm-hmm. and being 
okay with that and being honest about it, I think is like where I feel like a God is calling people to really take up their identity and be okay with who they are. Mm. And um, instead of like changing who they are to fit a mold, mm. like the people in life that have done things that have impacted the world were not always accepted mm. in that time. And it, so it doesn't always mean you're going to be the most popular person, you know, like, but just trusting that I have an identity and a calling to do something, but God has equipped me to do it. I don't have to be or transform myself to fit, mm -hmm. right? Like, so for example, right, if I felt called to do, to do a podcast, right, my first thing is like, oh, it's so oversaturated. Everybody has something to say. But I quickly like tell myself like, no, there's something unique mm -hmm. that I carry that is not going to be the same as you. Like what yeah. you would say and what I would say is different. And that doesn't mean that one is more important than the other. And that doesn't mean that there isn't space for either of us, right? So it's just owning your identity, trusting that God has equipped you to do it. And God has something special. And through your voice yeah. and your, when I say voice, I'm not talking about actual voice, but just in general, your expression. Um, and, and just trusting that and being honest about your struggles also. Because I feel like a lot of creatives, because they're trying to fit this mold, perfect, mm -hmm. like they want perfect art. And art is not perfection. Mm -hmm. Art is expression. There's no perfect expression. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, be honest about the struggle. Be honest about the victories, the joys, the pain. Like, be honest about it all and stop hiding. David was one of the greatest songwriters of our time because he was not ashamed to be honest. Mm -hmm. And like half of, like, he had songs that were like just him complaining the entire time. <laughs> and it was totally okay. So there's spaces where God's like, invite me into that. Like, get, like give that to me. Mm -hmm. Sing that to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to always resolve or turn. Mm -hmm. Just be honest with me about it, you know? And so I think more creatives are stepping into both of those things. And I hope that, like, I want to encourage creatives to do that. Like, be honest about your struggles. Don't feel like you have to fix yourself to express in a way that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the Lord, he wants you as you are. Like, he's not looking for perfection. You're, like, no matter how perfect you think you are, you're not. So, so you can try to aim and strive, but it's just you're going to fall. And so I think there's a lot of freedom in that. And I hope a lot of creatives realize and more and more creatives step into that freedom and um, owning their identity as a unique um, son and daughter. And so that's what I would say to the creatives of our time. Thank you. That's beautiful. Uh, I love what you shared about just being unique in yeah. your carrying your gifting to the world. And and sometimes we're just so focused on the numbers. We're focused on uh, who's going to see this, but it's just about us doing what we were called to do, just carrying the father in every little thing that we do and just being us, being unique, you, being authentic. So thank you. Thank you for yeah. joining Thanks me for in this conversation. Me. It was just lovely. <laughs> uh, Vishik, another mother who yes. has a daughter too, and just sharing... Um, your struggles and just your heart for what God has uh, in this time and season. So thank you. Thank you.